honestly say that I've never put wood on a porch for a fire April the 20th of any year that I can ever remember. We've got fire in the wood cook stove. Snowing and raining, sleet. Well, it's 6.30 in the afternoon. It's April the 20th, 2021. April the 20th, 2021. It's been snowing, it's been sleeting, and it's been raining. <clears throat> I've rushed out here and took some plastic and some cloth and some straw and different things and tried to cover up we got squash out here everywhere. I got potatoes up everywhere. Potatoes are pretty tough, but I know a squash ain't. Uh, <clears throat> plastic's not ideal, especially down close to the plant like that. It's not ideal, but it's what we got. It's what well, this is a little shot of the garden after the couple of nights below freezing. Had a big frost here one night the next night we didn't have as much here as some other places but it did get below freezing around 30 degrees 32 somewhere in there right around the freezing mark everything made it through that we had covered up of course the potatoes are they're tough anyway but this squash is what we worried about all this squash down this row right here <clears throat> we had a few tomato plants down through there uh, some of the squash got bit a little bit, but I think they're probably going to pull through. We're supposed to have some 80-degree weather next Monday and Tuesday, I think. And it's raining today. We got about an inch and a half rain wee hours of this morning. We had some, I don't know whether I've mentioned it or not, but we had some cover crop cloth that was uh we used during the winter and we had that hard freeze and got down you know 15 below zero eight inches of snow there was nothing over our lettuce our greens out there except that cloth and we had cold weather before the snow it got down around five six uh zero right in that area before it come that snow and when i took that cloth off of that lettuce it was still alive still green and it's growing like crazy right now we've ate off of it all winter but it was just a little bit under there that got a little bit frost bit but it it amazed me how what it done what that cover crop cloth that we used done you would have never thought it would have survived the old pond still got a little bit of water it's leaking out slow y'all have a blessed day Okay, I'm just going to laugh and show y'all my big grocery haul today from the farmer's market. I got me a big old bell pepper, some cucumbers, and tomatoes, green tomatoes, make fried green tomatoes. I got some really pretty little seed packets here. I got some homemade soap that smells wonderful. And I got me some uh, homemade lip balm. So y'all know that I don't do big grocery hauls because... <laughs> <laughs> and there's some plum jelly right there too but these were really nice stuff from the farmers market at M so I stopped by a little farmers market it's new to the area they're just right down from the school sweet little place and they had these beautiful black velvet petunias and they do they look just like black velvet so I got me a couple for my container here. 
It's just an old little wash tub. And all I got in here is some of our compost and probably a little bit of container potting soil mixed up in here. <clears throat> and of course, I don't have my gloves on because if I have gloves on, I cannot get my hands in the dirt. I like to feel the dirt on my hands. So I know a lot of people ask me, Miss Lord, why don't you wear gloves when you're gardening? Because I can't feel the dirt between my fingers and under my nails. So. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> I thought, well, what would look good with the black petunias? And i seen these yellow pansies. So I thought that would look good in the container together. So I'm just going to take, you see how they're root bound. And I'm just going to kind of gently just kind of mess with their roots a little bit. Not too much. Put them in here. I had never seen, I've seen black petunias in pictures, but I've never seen one in person, and they're, they are really, really pretty. So you just want to kind of just um, tease your roots a little bit. You don't have to plant them too deep. Now, I'm not much of one to spend a lot of money on annuals, especially in the bigger part of my flower and herb garden. I would rather plant perennials because it's it just saves money and you know everything comes back year after year. But for little containers like this, it don't bother me to <clears throat> to spend a little money on and on annuals that I know are going to be gone and not come back the next year, but um I didn't grow a lot of flowers in my new greenhouse, but next year, that's what I'm going to strive for, is to grow quite a few annuals and things that I won't have to buy. I just, I had my greenhouse full of um, so many vegetable plants that, uh, I did I did plant a few flowers though, but uh I just thought these were so pretty. And I got several little containers, little wash tubs that I needed just a few little flowers put in. And I'm a sucker for pansies and petunias. I'll always have them in my garden, I figure. Mr. Brown loves the little petunias too. His favorite are the, the purple and yellow ones. We have some little wild petunias that come up, and uh, I think some people might call them wild violets, but ours are, uh, they're yellow and purple, and they look like they got little faces on them. They're so cute. But I'm just going to plant several in here, because they will fill the pot out eventually as time goes on. You just want to want to deadhead your your older flowers, keep them deadheaded, and that will help to uh, to fill your plant out. Petunias love the summertime; and they just really strive and they thrive and do really good. Got a little bit of dirt on this one. Shake it off. Now my soil was already pretty pretty wet so I'm not going to have to uh, water them right now. I'll water them in a couple days. I don't want to overwater them. But there we go. We got one container down. I'm put my little bunny in there. My grandkids like the little animals I put around in the garden. And if you hear the water in the background that's my fountain. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about what Miss Lori won't do without in her garden anymore. And just that one simple thing is tool. This tool has been such a lifesaver um, when it comes to my 
my broccoli and my cabbages and different uh, grains, any kind of brassicas like that, but uh, this stuff really works. And the reason it works is you've got several pests that like to get on your, your cabbage leaves and your, your broccoli or cauliflower, just whatever. And uh, a lot of that, I mean, you got your, your army worms, your cut worms, you got your aphids. You know, sometimes you'll see them little white moths kind of flying around your cabbages and your broccoli and stuff like that. And them little white moths, what they'll do is they'll get on underneath that leaf and they're going to, uh, that's where their lar larvae is going to be and that's what's going to produce your little cut worms and they're just going to get in there and they're going to eat your leaves up. Um, I'm hoping I can find the picture of my cabbages last year, maybe years before, and uh, I kept them covered up, no matter how small or how big they got, I kept them covered up with tool, and uh, I grew some of the prettiest heads of cabbage. There was not hardly a, a hole in any of the leaves, and uh, I didn't have to use any neem oil. I didn't have to use any kind of homemade insecticide. Of course, everything in our garden is organic. We don't use any kind of pesticide or anything like that. So, the tool is just, I would not be without it. I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, it's just as simple as that. And you can order it, let's see, I order it in bulk from Amazon. But you can also get it on eBay. I think I got it cheaper on eBay, but uh, it did take me a while to get it off eBay. But ever since COVID, you know, things have been, it takes a while, especially coming out of California. And, uh, but once I did get it, get the, uh, my tool that I ordered from eBay, I was really happy with it. It's a mint color. Um, I'm trying, I can't even remember how many yards it was, but it was $10.00. I had to look and see. I done forgot. But anyways, it it's just does not cost much money. And I'm telling you, it's going to save you such a headache in the garden when it comes to all them pests. Because when you cover them brassicas up, when you cover them cabbage up, and what I do when my cabbage gets so big, right now I just got them kind of covered up like this. But after they get so big, I take the tool and uh, I just kindly... You know put it over the cabbage head and the leaves and I just kind of tuck it around and it keeps the moss from getting in there and laying that larvae which will turn into your worms that will eat your leaves so yes this is what I just won't be without there's just a lot of things that and I'm gonna tell you and um, I never used these before in my garden. We've been gardening forever. Never even thought about it. But uh, I do watch a lot of gardening uh, channels and shows on TV. And I read a lot of books. I've all, I'm a researcher. I just love to research this stuff and just learn. But uh, I was watching on YouTube. And it's a gardening channel. It's called Robin Gary. And they're out of Southern California, I believe. And she's the one that introduced me to the tool. And I have been so glad ever since because it has been a life changer for me. Here in Arkansas, you got all kinds of bugs. You've got them little, um, what are them little black beetle, the flea beetles or something like that. And uh, they will, they're just, they'll just tear your cabbages and your broccoli leaves plumb up and uh, the aphids and everything. So if you're just not really into trying to even use the neem oil or the homemade insecticides that I don't always have a lot of good luck with, every once in a while it works, but not always. This right here works. And I, you can see I've got it from one end and I've got it all the way to the other. And this is... A lot of my broccoli, this is my kohlrabi, my radishes, I got spinach under here, I've got fennel, I've got sage, I've just got all kinds of stuff under here, and uh, 
It has. And it's even kind of when everything was just little bitty coming out of the greenhouse, you know, just little bitty seedlings, and I put them and planted them in here. Of course, living out here where we live, we have field mice, and they like to get in there, and they like to eat the tops off it, the tender little seedlings. And I'm telling you, oh, it upsets me so bad. Because you go to all that hard work, and you guys come out here, and they eat all the tops off of them. Oh, my goodness. But I do. I just co I covered them up with this with my little hoops and uh, just kind of put rocks around them and it did keep it did keep some of the rodents out of course at the end of the high tunnel I've got some uh, some stuff up trying to keep the rabbits out right now and uh, we're gonna fix that situation sometime or another <laughs> but uh, I've just got so much going on here in this high tunnel and uh, I'll show you a little bit of it Thing that's in here it started in the greenhouse here we got fennel and we got cauliflower we got broccoli and we've even got some uh, radishes down there the broccoli is doing so good here in the high tunnel and of course we have had some cold weather I didn't really worry about my broccoli here in the high tunnel when we had them two days of below freezing. Here I've got sage. I need to get in here and weed the little weeds out. The broccoli. And I got some little radishes down there. Now I have fertilized my broccoli um, once. And I fertilize with uh, fish emulsion. But besides that, all that's in here is uh, our own compost, uh, worm castings, and uh, goat manure. I've got some flowers planted down here and more radishes. Broccoli. You see the marigolds coming up. You can also see a bunch of weeds that's got to come out of there too. We come on down. I've got kohlrabi that I can't wait till it till I can eat some because I tell you I've never ate it, but from what I've heard, it's just delicious. So I'm getting excited about that. They say it's it tastes kind of like a cross between cabbage and maybe a turnip or radish. And there I've got some spinach down in there. And it's really good spinach. See how beautiful it is. This right here is broccoli plant. More spinach, more kohlrabi. Now, I'm going to show y'all my French radishes. I know a lot of people that absolutely do not like radishes. And they're not my favorite. But I do like to eat them early in the spring when they're not too bitter, not too hot. And these are by far my favorite. These are the French breakfast radishes. And I just want to show y'all because I'm fixing to pull a bunch of them because I'm going to replant. Uh, I think I've got some more in the greenhouse that I'm going to go ahead and replant right here. So we just keep the cycle going. And let me tell you something. When I plant them, they're going to look just like this. And within, I don't know, a week or so, they're going to be looking like this and then like this. They grow really, really fast. And to tell you the truth, I don't really like them getting too big. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one. Isn't that pretty? These are so good. And a lot of times I'll use these radishes in place of potatoes. They're so good. 
just boil them a little bit till they're tender or roast them in the oven with just by themselves with garlic and butter some herbs or put them in with a um a roast anything like that like you would a potato i don't like them getting very big because they tend to get a little bit woody and kind of hollow in the middle if you let them get too big but these are these are delicious so I'm going to be going ahead and pulling these. And make them room for, for more. And here's some volunteer. I'm going to say that's a sunflower. Right there. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull some of these. And when you pull them, they just, they just come right out of the ground. They're not. I mean, their little roots is not... You see how pretty that is. So good in a salad. Now the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to leave these out at room temperature overnight. For some reason they start getting really soft fast like most radishes do. So if you're not going to eat them right away you need to go ahead and uh, put them in the refrigerator and crisper or something. But anyways I've got a bunch of them planted in and out of different places in the high tunnel. You can see I've got them right here. I'm going to be pulling these up too. Some of these have gotten really big. I just don't want them getting any bigger than this. So we'll go ahead and pull them. And I'll get this spot ready to put uh, more in here. Look at this one's way too big, really. I'm sure when I cut into it, it's probably going to be, it may not be, but I'm going to say it's going to be a little bit woody, but it would still be good roasted up too. And here's one back here. So all these are really going to be good. So, if you're sitting on the fence with radishes, try these French breakfast radishes because I really think you'll like them. Got some peppermint that comes back every year. I had done harvested a lot a lot of my parsley and it's trying to come back a little bit. My endive you can see there's a radish and I've harvested a lot of this lettuce in fact I pulled a bunch of it up that had been here all winter and then I've replanted a bunch of kale and lettuces and spinach back in there I've got dill some really pretty dill look how pretty that is look how dirty my hands are <laughs> yep that's what my hands look like when I'm outside it's like a little kid. But anyways, beautiful deal. Of course, there's carrots them in there, too. Got carrots down in there. Trying to see what else I got going on here in the high tunnel way back here. There's some more lettuces back there. There's some romaine. If you can see it. More lettuces spinach and a lot of this is left from winter time there's some curly kale lettuce and spinach chard spinach I replanted a bunch of Swiss chard back in here. So it's trying to come up. But I can tell you, had some little mice eat the heads off a bunch of them. But I think they're going to come back, maybe. And, of course, we eat on this constantly. I'm constantly coming out here and harvesting and eating it. But I've still got some things to work on on that end of the, the bed. Rosemary and... Nasturtium's coming up, and I've got some leeks I need to thin out down there. But I'm st still working. It's still early.
but we just have so much in here so good that lettuce back there it needs to be eight but I keep this shade cloth over it because I'm trying to keep um, I don't want my lettuce and stuff to go to seed too early this year so I'm thinking if I can keep the shade cloth over it even here in the high tunnel maybe I'll be able to keep it a little bit longer because when it starts really getting hot here, your lettuce starts going to seed. So, anyways, that's what's going on in the high tunnel. I'm going to cover my brassicas back up, my broccoli and cauliflower. And, of course, the kohlrabi and everything. I'm going to cover it back up. Take my radishes inside. And uh, let's go look at the cabbages. Okay, I got two cabbages going on here. Now, usually I only do one cabbage per container, but I'm going to try two per container. They won't probably get as huge as they did last year, but I really don't care because I really like a young, tender, small head of cabbage. It's not always about, you know, it being as huge as your head, but just being good. So if I can get two decent sized cabbages per container i feel like that's pretty good but i have to tell y'all a funny story now i start <laughs> y'all don't pay no attention because my garden is still a mess we're still cleaning up on it but anyways um i started my my seeds out in the greenhouse and i can tell y'all my greenhouse done so good Really proud of it. But anyways, I guess I must have got some, <laughs> some of my seedlings kind of messed up. Because when your cauliflower and your broccoli are little bitty seedlings, they look pretty much alike. So here I come out here thinking that every one of them little seedlings that I planted was cabbage. That wasn't. <laughs> so here I've got a cabbage and I've got a broccoli. I thought there was two cabbages here, but there's two broccolis. Which is fine. I'm not complaining. But, you know, i got to start paying more attention to that stuff. Here I've got a cabbage and a broccoli. Two broccolis. I thought it was two cabbages. Let's see. Two cabbages and a broccoli. I've got two nice looking cabbages. They're not very old. Pretty young. The leaves are looking just really good. Here I got a, ca a cabbage and a broccoli. Over here I got two cabbages. Two cabbages. This right here was supposed to be two cabbages, but it's two broccolis. So, don't do like I did and make a mistake of getting things kind of messed up there in the greenhouse. Cabbage, broccoli, cabbage. So you can see I kind of messed up there, but it'll all be good. It's all going to be good. I got a bunch of cabbages right here. And of course, there's two broccolis at the end that I thought were cabbages that weren't, but that's okay. I can live with that. Just as long as the rabbits don't start getting up in here. I've got a lonely little broccoli right here. I need to get me a better piece of tool on there. All this went through all that... Uh, wind and them two days of below freezing weather and we just used anything that we had to cover stuff up in fact i used a shade cloth and a piece of tool to cover all this up which i wasn't as afraid with my cold uh weather plants like my cabbages and broccoli i really wasn't as afraid with them i knew that they would uh they would fare pretty good Over here I've got some, I had a, some extra broccoli plants, and I can see that uh, before I got my tool on here, you can see that something started eating on the plants, the leaves. And that one looks like a worm on that one. So I'll have to find him. He may still be under all that, but I just recently covered it up. The 
Let's see, I've got some purple cabbages planted in there with it. And I think that's uh, some blue corn. I had a subscriber send me some uh, blue corn seeds, but the way the leaves are looking, I need to probably fertilize them. But I've just got them stuck here and there and everywhere. Got me some sweet peas going on here. And let me tell you something, they have been through it. They have been through some cold weather. And I covered them up with, a, I had a couple pieces of my row crop cover insulated. And I come out here and just kind of teepeed them and covered them up. And they made it through all that mess. And they're blooming. I love my sweet peas. And I've got some beets planted over here. So, that's all we got going on right now. As of this far. April 23rd, 2021. So, yes, the one thing I won't be without in the garden anymore is tool. Well, I hope y'all maybe learned a little bit from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoy being with y'all anytime I can. We'll be back in a couple of days. Y'all have a wonderful weekend and another wonderful blessed week that's coming up. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you're not getting my notifications, you may have to go back and, uh, and hit it again, hit that bell again. So y'all know when more videos are coming. So God bless everybody. We love y'all. We'll see you soon.